So we have for ourselves an AC circuit, and now we're going to have two elements in series with each other, a resistor and an inductor. And if we approach it using the Kirchhoff's loop rules, like we always want to try, then we can use loop rule. And we will get the voltage of the source, which is capital V max cosine of omega t minus the resistor, which is R times the current over the resistor as a function of time, minus L times the derivative of the current over the inductor as a function of time, and all equal to zero. So the first thing we can do is we can take a look at this junction, and we can see that the current going over the resistor and the current going over the inductor are the same. So we don't have to worry about that. But we're in a lot of trouble, because if we take a look at this differential equation, di of t dt, we have negative r over l, i of t minus capital V max over l, cosine of omega t. And we've got ourselves a real problem, because previously with our differential equations, we had constants as anything that wasn't a function of the current, and now we have this cosine. So this is actually too hard of a differential equation. So the loop rule is not going to help us, but we use this junction rule With our junction rule, we can see the current going through the source is equal to the current going over the resistor is equal to the current going over the inductor. So we can say mathematically, I sub r as a function of time equals I sub l as a function of time equals I sub source as a function of time is just equal to the current. And so if our current is the shared measurement, we want the phase of the current to be zero and then everything else to be compared to the phase of the current. So we can write this as capital I max cosine of omega t. And so what we can do is we can use phasor analysis instead of right, loop rule or junction rule analysis now that we've learned phasor analysis. So with this, I know that I have a current I max. And now that I have this current and I know it, I can take a look at right when current is the shared measurement. And go over our understanding of those. So previously when we had this, we had that the voltage of the resistor is going to be in phase cosine of omega t. And then we use Ohm's law to use that r times I max cosine of omega t for our voltage of our inductor as a function of time. We know that our inductor's voltage is going to be ahead by pi over 2. And then we have the equivalent of R or the reactance that we learned about omega L in front of this. So when current is the shared measurement, we will then have, and then we have then that Right, the voltage max over R is equal to R times I. The voltage max over the inductor is equal to omega L times I. Maximum values. So then we can write our voltage over our resistor maximum is going to be a vector. And the voltage over our inductor maximum is going to be 90 degrees ahead of both of these. And so what we found is that, right, the voltage of the inductor plus the voltage of the resistor will equal the voltage of the source. And so we can treat that as, right, time-dependent functions, or we can look at the Pythagorean theorem vector addition of these. Let me draw my additions of these a little bit better.
And so we have then the voltage of the source maximum as a vector is equal to the voltage of the inductor maximum vector plus the voltage of the resistor maximum vector. And so let's draw that out just a little bit nicer. So we have the voltage of our inductor. We have the voltage of our resistor. And then the vector addition of those is going to be the voltage of our source with the voltage of our resistor and the voltage of our inductor being at right angles from each other. So this is a prime time to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we can say then the voltage of our source, right, maximum squared is equal to the voltage of our resistor, maximum squared, the voltage of our inductor, maximum squared. You can see why other textbooks don't write the maximum every single time. So we know that our voltage of our resistor is R times I max. The voltage of our inductor is omega L times I max. So we can look at the voltage of our source max is R squared, I max squared plus omega L quantity squared, I max squared. And so grouping the I maxes together and then taking the square root, we get the voltage of our source right, maximum is equal to the square root of R squared plus omega L quantity squared I max. And comparing this to our Ohm's law, this is now the equivalent of resistance in AC circuits, right? That we have a relationship between our voltage and our current. And so we are going to call this Z. And for this RC circuit, it's going to be equal to the square root of R squared plus omega L squared. Later, we'll see that we have capacitors, and we'll get a slightly different relationship for that. But in a general sense, just showing, right, for two elements is kind of nice. And in addition to that, we can take a look at the angle between my I max and the voltage of my source. So we'll draw that one last time. We've got the current maximum and then we drew the voltage of the resistor, the voltage of the inductor maximum. And that gave us the voltage of the source. Well, this angle is the phase angle between I max and voltage of the source. And this angle relates with a right triangle. This is being our right triangle. So we can say that the tangent of this phase angle phi is equal to opposite V sub L over adjacent V sub R. But we can use these two relationships. So we have R I max over, oh sorry, omega L I max over R I max. Sorry about that. Cancel out the I maxes. And then we can take an inverse tangent to get that our phase angle phi is the arc tangent or inverse tangent of omega L over R. So we then have the equivalent of the resistance for an RL circuit. We have the phase angle, and soon we'll then use this for an RLC circuit and get our general solution for this. But this is a good example just with 